Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be making over a number 13C Thames Rec Truck that was made in 1961. I would like to apologise in advance that somehow I got my folders mixed up and some of my holiday photographs got embedded in this video. As you can see I have two of these models, one red and one blue and I am contemplating which one to do up. So the blue one has no crane jib and is painted but the red one has a crane jib but no wheels. So I am tending towards the, the blue model because this blue model has the original base and wheels and the rivet. So for a change I'm going to leave this rivet in. But, having said that, I'm going to have to drill this rivet out on the red truck to remove the crane jib. Give it a bit of a wiggle and the crane jib comes out. Now, as for the body of this red truck, it's going to go into my scrap bin, which is basically my uh, things to do bin for when I have the parts to do it. Next, I'm going to remove the paint using paint stripper. So I'm applying with the brush, I'm wearing the rubber gloves obviously and I'm steering clear of the wheels because sometimes the wheels can melt with this paint stripper. After applying the paint stripper we wait a few minutes for it to do its thing and then I remove the paint stripper and the paint. And here, out of interest, is the original colour of the model and a, a remnant of the original sticker. So now I'm doing the crane jib and using my dental tools, which a subscriber recommended, and I thank you for that because they are awesome. I'm now scraping off any leftover paint that the toothbrush did not remove. Now I've cut the axles on the model and removed the wheels, but one of the wheels went missing. So I'm going to have to find that. I'm sure it's not far away. Uh, here's the crane jib. I'm going to drill out this rivet post and tap it with this short tap. I'm going to drill it out with this short drill and I'm going to put this short screw in. That way I won't drill through the base. And here is what it looks like when I've done all that. And it's pretty solid. So it's good and ready for an undercoat. Now looking at details of the casting, we've got some, uh, some pretty good stuff. There's a toolbox there with a, a padlock on it. And uh, I'm going to give it a very light coat of undercoat using Tamiya Fine Undercoat. Uh, as for the wheels, I'm going to use some brake fluid and a cotton bud to try and remove any remnants of paint that are on the wheels. This will make the wheels look brand new. A bit frothy there, that's uh, probably residue from uh, toothpaste off that brush. But uh, afterwards they come up clean, I give them a bit of a bath and then spray them with some Tamiya top coat to make them look new. Now for something different, I'm using these rivets as uh, axles. So what you do is you knock the, the rivet part off. Rivet off, there we go, that can go in the bin, and what you're left with is the tail, and this makes a perfect axle. Look at that! So, half the work is done for you, all you've got to do is cut them to length and reform the other end. Now, for the color matching, I've got four different reds here Humbro, Tamiya, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Hobby. So, I'm going to mix them up get a dab of each and 
and see which one closely resembles the paint on the underside because the the top side's been tainted somebody's painted it black and you know doesn't it's not original so we've done the humbrol now the tamia there we go a bit of a dab mr hobby 327 And Mr. Hobby number 33. Well, after all that, I don't think it's the first one, and I don't think it's the last one. So it's between Tamiya X7 and Mr. Hobby 327. So I went with the Tamiya X7. So after mixing the paint with some thinners, I put it in the spray brush, and off I go. So after it had dried, I wasn't very happy with it. I thought that maybe it should have been one shade darker. So I ended up respraying it with Mr. Hobby 327. Next, after the paint was dry, it was time to fit a new hook. So I bought a hook from recovertoy.com. Have a look at that. They're quite good. Looks very detailed. Actually, it looks like metal. But... And to attach it, I'm using another tail from a rivet. Only this one's going to be a lot shorter. Now, I couldn't get the hook in, so I've had to splay the, the end of the jib with a flat-bladed screwdriver to make this fit. And there it goes. It's quite tight quite snug so whilst it's in there I'll pin that with the tail of the rivet cut it to length we want it close but not too close and that is the end I'm going to reform to secure the hook onto the jib so for those people that don't have a drill press this is another option for you I'm using my dolly from the drill press in my vise and I'm going to hit it with this ball paint hammer so watch this, I'm putting some material over the dolly so that, uh, just to protect the paint finish on the jib basically. When you are doing this you have to be very careful because one missed strike and you will be back to square one again. The red on my fingers is not uh, red paint as you might think, it's actually fake blood from a previous video. And this is what it looks like when you've finished. People have asked me about the drill press, uh, the dolly. This is a bullet headed nail. And I modified it to look like this so that when I put it in my drill press, I could reform the end of the axles. And all I did was center punch the end of the nail and drill it out with a small drill. It works quite well. So if you haven't got one, get yourself a drill press. And that's what they look like when they're done. Quite neat. Now I've got some reproduction uh, decals to put on. And I found these uh, pink eyebrow tweezers in our ensuite, so they'll, they'll do. You need a paintbrush, some uh, paper towel for removing moisture, some cotton buds or Q-tips as they're called. Now, for the decals, I'm cutting them out with these scissors, roughly to size, just to give them a test fit to see if they are correct, because you can never assume. 
and I am looking at these and they are looking quite good so I'm happy with that I'm dunking them in the lukewarm water and whilst they are separating from the backing sheet I am moistening the vehicle to give me time to move the decal into position after I apply it Uh, point of note, this decal has some printing on the back of it and the die has come out and it's kind of tainted the decal so uh, maybe the people that are making these decals should take that into consideration and think well maybe I should use some uh, plain backed decal sheets from now on. As it is it didn't cause any problems, it came good in the end, looks nice. I'm guessing it could have been catastrophic if it was a white decal. Bit of paper towel there and some cotton buds just to roll out any excess moisture or air bubbles that might be under the transfer. And that looks pretty good. This time I forgot to moisten the model. So I pulled this out and I'm thinking, yeah, it could be moved a little bit, but hang on, it's stuck because I didn't put water on before I put the decal on. So I've had, now I had to flood it with some water to loosen it, and there we go. It came good in the end. But point of note, always remember to moisten the model before you put the decal on. And there we go, that looks quite good. Again, squeegeeing with the cotton bud, rolling, not dragging. If you drag, you might tear the decal. And I'm happy with that. So finally, I've just got to touch up some details using a uh, silver paint pen ink uh, with a, a small paintbrush. And uh, very delicate work. So good to have the magnifier here. For those that ask, this is a Pentor uh, paint marker, super silver, and a Royal Lang Nickel brush. So now for the final reveal. As you can see, this model has been transformed. It is now back to its original red with a crane jib and a new hook and the original grey tires have been restored. I think you'll agree that it looks absolutely magnificent. Thank you for watching. thing is actually in here. I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> how the hell that got in there I don't know. Okay someone's gonna have a go at me for not using tweezers. <laughs> That was a freaking bit I wanted.